Solve each radical equation. Check the answers in the original problem. All right, so a general method that we'll follow for solving radical equations is we want to first isolate the radical, and then second, we will use the squaring property. We will square both sides. And then we'll progress from there. And it's always a good idea. And we really do need to check our solutions when we're solving radical equations because that squaring process can introduce extraneous solutions of the equation. All right, so let's see some examples. Example A, we have the square root of x is equal to 4. So notice that the variable, uh, uh, so the radical, that square root of x is already isolated. So I can jump to step 2 and square both sides. So I'll square both sides. The square root of x squared is x, and 6 squared is, four, is 16. Sorry, 4 squared is 16. Let's run a quick check. Is the square root of 16 equal to 4? Yes. So we can be confident in our solution. Exercise B. We have the square root of y plus 3 is equal to 11. Is the radical isolated? It's not. So let's isolate the radical first. I'll subtract 3 from both sides. That'll isolate the radical, yielding the square root of y is equal to 8. And now I will square both sides, yielding y equals 64. Let's run the check. Is the square root of 64? Then add 3. Is this equal to 11? Well, that gives us 8 plus 3, which is 11. That checks out. I'm confident in my solution. Exercise C. 3 times the square root of a, add 4, is equal to 19. First, let's isolate the radical. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. So that yields 3 times the square root of a is equal to 15. Now the radical is still not isolated. So I will now divide through by 3 on both sides, yielding the square root of a is equal to 5. The radical is isolated. So now I will square both sides yielding a is equal to 25. Let's check that. Is 3 times the square root of 25 plus 4 equal to 19? So that's 3 times 5 plus 4, which is 15, plus 4, which is 19. It checks out. I'm confident in the solution. Exercise D. The square root of 4n plus 6 is equal to 2. The radical is isolated. Even though there's multiple terms under the radical, it is isolated. So I can immediately square both sides of this equation. Yielding 4n plus 6 is equal to 4. And now I notice that this is just a linear equation. I subtract 6, yielding 4n equals negative 2, and I divide through by 4, yielding that n is equal to negative 1 half. Let's check this. Is the square root of 4 times negative 1 half plus 6 equal to 2? Following the order of operations, this gives me the square root of negative 2 plus 6, which is the square root of 4, which is equal to 2. So 2 does equal 2, and the solution is n equals negative 1 half.